Hello everybody and welcome to Behind the Scenes, a short little video where I get interviewed by a fellow creator, Digital Ryan, asking about my process and what I do for YouTube and how I approach things. This is more of a interview with me being in and getting to know a little bit more about me, what I do, and just what I think behind the videos that you see online. Be sure to leave a like, leave a comment, and subscribe if you're new. I post videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday with a stream on Saturday and random videos in between like this one. And be sure to check out Digital Ryan's video. I'll add a card right up in the top right corner of the screen. And go ahead and watch that. He did a real good job of, you know, portraying what he saw in my channel that I didn't see. So without further ado, enjoy the video. Wait, looking around. Yeah, I'm off to your left. There, you there we go. Yeah, I'm off. Uh, I always, uh, yeah, I always like, you know, just fix. I leave it in because you know it's part of me. Like if you talk to me in real life, I'll like, I'll sit there and I'll be like finishing one thought and then I'll stop and then I'll be like, oh yeah, also about this thing that happened 20 minutes ago. <laughs> Maybe that's what I got then, because I do that with my wife, and she can't stand it, because she can't keep up. She's like, what are you talking about? And then I have to explain it, and then by then, the moment's gone. Yeah, I do, I do it, like, I do it, like, uh, a lot with my girlfriend. Like, one of the things I'll do is I'll forget that I say, if we're driving around where I grew up, um, I'll forget that I say, like, oh, I know where I am. And so I'll say it, like, three times after I get lost and I figure out where we are. And so I'll say it, like, three times in a row, and she's like... It's like, you've been saying that for the past 10 minutes. <laughs> but yeah. But you have to get past it. Either way, I got to admit, it's neat because it'll it'll give you a flavor. I've noticed, this is one of the, I actually had a question for this one. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to skip the first one. was like, how you got the names? So we'll go straight to this one. Yeah. I've, I'm have i sure you've watched enough Let's Plays. I don't know if you did like some research before you did it or just kind of went off, but a lot of people just do the generic, this is what I'm, like they describe what they're doing as they're doing it and mm. that's all they have. They don't think about, like, how do I make my voice sound better? How do I get good gear and stuff like that? I'm just curious, like, what other choices do you make? Yeah, so I... It's interesting to have the ADD one where you kind of, you're, you're off and then you come back again, kind of. And I, I've heard they call them attention getters, where it kind of focus makes the person focus on paying more attention when you come back to a point. Yeah, so actually, um, it's weird. It's kind of a... I'll start from the technical side of things and then I'll go into like, you know, just what I do now because, you know, everyone evolves and changes. So I've actually wanted to do content like this for uh, like since Minecraft came out. Like I remember it was like 2012 and I was I would like record myself playing my Xbox world for like five minute videos on my iPhone <laughs> And I just sit there and comment about like, you know, what were, what, like what I was doing, like just kind of random stuff, you know, the sit there and explain what you're doing thing. Yeah. Um, this and would have been the old 360, uh, Minecraft 360 then, right? Not yeah. No. Bedrock. Yeah. No, the Minecraft that I have was, I bought it the day it came out on Xbox 360. Um, because I had come across it in 2009 let's see, hold on. Gotta make sure this is the right river. I think it is. Yeah. Okay. Um, but I first came across it in like 2009 and, um, my friend, like my dad has a business partner at a kid who was out at our lake house and my friend, he was playing, um, Minecraft on it. And I was like, what's that? And he's like, Oh, it's this game called Minecraft. Uh, you can buy it on, uh, you can buy it online for like 26 bucks. And you know, back then 26 bucks was a ton to me. <laughs> um because i was like eight or nine right and ever since then i've just always really enjoyed playing it you know i've always been the creative type and this is just like has been a medium where i can play it so over the years you know i have always had the issue of being underperformed on like uh specs so i always had like wanting to do it but i always like my first laptop that i had it on outside of the xbox was my school laptop in seventh grade <laughs> um so you can imagine i had a few youtube channels back then that i think one of them was called like raving chicken dude 
Uh, <laughs> another one was like beast. Oh, so this isn't your first one. See that I didn't know. Yeah. So those I'm ones. To do some research here without getting too in depth with because I always like learning this stuff by a surprise. But yeah, yeah, yeah. That one. Yeah. So that one was. Those were all. I, they didn't last like past seventh grade. Um, you know, unregistered Bandicam. Oh yes, we're pulling up on my world right now. But I figured I'd start at the house. But unregistered Bandicam. Um, you know the works. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Built-in laptop microphone. Yeah, trying like trying to. I think 1.8 had just come out on the PC. Ah. Um, and then yeah, I was just I tried that, and then fast forward to 2016, I got a little bit better of a laptop, but still didn't have you know the power, the microphone, whatever. My parents wanted me to focus on like you know like school and stuff like that. Um, but you know, we, uh, we had, um, we, they, they wanted me to focus on that stuff. And I was just like, okay, well, I'll do this just to make sure I have a plan B. And plus, you know, it was, I was old enough to realize that the likelihood of getting like syndicate hermit craft level success at that time, back then it would have been mind crack. I think. Yeah. Back then it was mind crack. The Minecraft project was a big one, and yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> um, yeah, so basically, it's been a 10 year kind of thing. And just last year, I bought my new PC and finally had the power to, you know, make it. I bought the Streamer Pro just to have, um, like a blueprint to build off of, yeah. Um, because I didn't feel like building my first PC, <laughs> uh, but it's got everything I need. I can play exactly what I want. And so this year I was just like, you know what? I have always been worried about like what my old friends thought about me like playing it. Cause I used to get a lot of crap for playing Minecraft. I felt like in 2017 or 2018, when it picked back up again, I felt so like cheated because I used to get bullied for playing it. And then all of a sudden it was, was cool. When, uh, PewDiePie went back into it. His unironic restarting Minecraft thing, wasn't it? And then yep. It got popular. Yep. Again. Yep. And then everyone was like, oh, you don't play Minecraft. I was like, bro, you used to pick on me for playing Minecraft. <laughs> like, I remember one kid punched me in the chest because I said I was talking about us playing Minecraft in front of a girl he liked in seventh grade. <laughs> uh, oh, man. Yeah. That takes me back. See, I'm, I'm a 90s kid. So for me, like getting punched when you played any video game was kind of the norm. Yeah. Yeah, I know. But um, yeah, if you have any questions I can answer or we can do some of the tour and then have stopping points. Well, I figured we we're, were, I was going to do a little bit of tour and then a little bit of questions and kind of keep it light. Yeah. For the most part here. Okay. Yeah. So this is, so this is the main, this is the main house. Or this is your first house. This is your original mud hut area. Yeah. This is, so this is my, this is actually the mud hut. I started out with this. Um, if you come out here, I kind of, I started this in October. So if you go back to my first video, I wanted to, I kind of took an etho approach where I just skipped like, cause especially in 2024 and 2023, everyone knows what you do in Minecraft at the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I just obligatory punching of the log scene. Yeah. Yeah, I did. Um, except it was because I forgot wood for something. So yeah, I went and built this, built this house. And then I played a few days on it before actually recording any videos. And then I started recording videos on it just because I was like, okay, well, I'm not gonna like, I'm not going to, you know, get like started by just sitting here playing and not recording anything. And so here I decided just to use this build and I actually went a different direction uh, with this build. So originally this world used to have uh, Doku Craft Dark as the texture pack. Um, okay with the shaders so it looked I think I remember that's the one that kind of looks it's it's more realistic than this one but it's still kind of cartoony right yeah it's like Dark it's like it's like a little more cartoony than the john smith um and so okay, I, I think i've seen that one i've watched a few videos to try and get prepared for this one so yeah yeah that. yeah yeah so this used to be uh i had two series called you know one was another minecraft let's play and i started out in the basement you know this was my corner i'd always start everything do my intro right here um and then just trying to figure out things. And, you know, I added to things as we went along. Um, and one of the inspirations behind kind of, you know, my series structure is that 
you know, like, like how you'd see like a YouTube world and like, it just build up in the background and you'd be like, Oh, look at that. That's like the, the little, Oh yeah. So as, as each introduction is the same thing, but the background changes. I yeah. Yeah. So like one introduction, I mean, it started out just in a bare cobblestone corner and then, you know, like the furnaces came, this chain, the bench changed a little bit, the lights, and then the floors changed and then, you know, it bled into the building. Um, so I picked this world just because the other world I had was a little like the two series merged. Um, but the other world isn't as developed as this one. Uh, if that makes sense. So no, I get it. I get yeah. It. Yeah. He, this one had like 40 episodes. The other one had 16 before I merged the worlds. And by that, I mean, now I've made it in this series where if I feel like playing whichever world I want, I can just go into another portal and edit myself into the other world <laughs> oh i get it uh yeah i've seen i've seen people do that with the uh collabs the hermitcraft one with uh smallish beans old server i can't remember the mm -hmm. name of it, empires yeah yeah so this is just like the little upstairs area kind of built this these books were like they used to like set up the lore for my old episodes um nice. so i'd sit there write them and then struggle to read <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Dude, I actually started adding this one to mine. That's awesome. So I'm glad to see it works. So here's here's a question for. Oh, sorry, I gotta put that the right <laughs> one. I guess it's the realm. So your gear. I know about the laptop one. Yep. How do you approach the audio on this one? Okay. Like if it helps, I'm running uh, an SM57 with the Focusrite 212, and I have a Moco 60K FPS uh, camera for when I do the streams. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I have uh, a Blue Yeti. <laughs> Oh, classic. Yep. The, I got the Blue Yeti with the Samson microphone arm and a $5 pop filter I bought in 2014 when I bought a $20 mic that didn't even work. Um, I do the audio just through my headphones and uh, just some filters through like noise gates and compression and OBS. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Aside from that, you know, I have some soundproof paneling, but other than that, I don't have like an interface. Um, I can usually get, I can usually get it to pretty good audio levels in here. Sometimes you'll hear a little bit of echo, but yeah. I was going to say for your audio setup, I would not have guessed a USB mic. I'd guess an XLR. Yep. No, nope. it's just a, just your typical USB mic. I actually got it a deal. I got the microphone and arm for about $176 straight from yeah, best. That's pretty good. Yeah. Straight from yeah, best. Buy. My, my my first one, same thing. It was a blue Yeti. It was uh, it was a guy from this other clone Trent creator called Rich Cooper. Mm -hmm. I bought it off of him for about two hundred. Yeah. And then I got rid of that, and I've switched over. What I love though is like, because with this gear, it's kind of the same as yours. It's inexpensive, but mm -hmm. it's like workhorse stuff. Like yeah. SM fifty eight is the one that that rock stars will always play at bands mm -hmm. you know, with the goofy little uh, silver ball around it. Yeah. Yeah, and the Maco six K is literally one of those little raspberry pie machines mm -hmm. and it has a dslr miniature like lens on it huh. like a hundred bucks too yeah for my I always... oh go ahead i was gonna say yeah that's what i love when because on your stream that's, mm -hmm. this whole setup is maybe 500 bucks and it sounds like you pretty much have the exact same level of quality from it yeah no which, i and it takes more than a noise gate and a little bit of eq boosting especially since uh usb mics they always have that that top end mm -hmm. noise because of the way the power works on the USB cables. Yeah. But like, so like sound engineering, you actually know the sound engineering or have you just been kind of tinkering with it till you got it where you liked it? So like how, how level of how, how autistic have you been on that? <laughs> front? Uh, so funny. You should ask um, <laughs> in my music stuff. I actually, this is just my little storage house, by the way, um, yeah. in my music house uh, or not music in my music, I actually, so I kind of did the jerry rigging way, you know how most musicians do where they don't like now like if you like look on TikTok, everyone's so focused on like what what EQ ratio do you have? What what gain what compressor ratio do you have to your fifth bus? And it's like, bro, just use your ear. <laughs> so I've actually developed a decently good ear for EQ and stuff. So all I did was just sit here with the different knobs on my microphone and OBS and just sat there and tweaked them until I got the studio quality that I wanted. Um, yeah, so here's my, you know, barn. It's actually pretty good. Behind it's my profit farm. Um, this actually, building this barn... Profit oh, is oh, in gosh. the Lord and Savior or profit is in emeralds? 
Prophet as in emeralds, I am their lord and savior. <laughs> uh, um, but yeah, uh, this one, let's see, uh, can I change this? I'm going to turn. Change whatever you want, it's your world. I know. Ah. Yeah, uh, well, with the audio thing, it's interesting because I'm, I'm one of those guys. I'm actually, this is like my second channel. I have another channel that does a whole different thing. Long mm -hmm. story. But I found usually when you want to get into something new, you just go and see what smarter people have done. And the tutorial stuff is mostly just filler. So mm -hmm. you really have to go find some some crazy hermit that talks about this stuff on a 40-minute video eight years ago. Yeah. But you are right. with His best advice for EQ settings and all that was just, listen. if it sounds right, then it's good. Yeah. It, your ear can is your biggest friend in this. Um, stuff like Stuff like that never really bothered me. Also, I'm used to having to jerry-rig things. Uh for setups so right. sitting here messing with the knobs was nothing new um but yeah this is my little farmhouse basic little storm si storage situation stuff like that i was gonna say i can see why you're talking you called it better to beta or was it be uh back to beta right yeah back to beta days like these builds are very what you would see in like a paul sorez jr mm -hmm. or uh slip gator video from about that time i think yeah yeah because it's like it's not too detailed it's not overly detailed but it's not too bland either it's like that golden age of minecraft where everyone was learning about like learning about the game we knew enough and had the building skill but it's not like i built the entire solar system in a week <laughs> right um yeah, that's that we were talking before that's definitely the area people are people are getting burnt you know people are getting burnt out with yeah. uh, the mega build Everybody was trying to be, you know, who's to blame for that, by the way, Mr. Beast. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Beast had that stupid three podcasts where he told people about bigger and bigger and better. And, mm -hmm. that, and then every Minecrafter decided to build a million slime farm or whatever the hell. Yeah. And that's when everybody started burning out. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a crazy thing. Like how YouTube works on its own. Like, you know, I'm a, like, I'm a, uh, was it i'm a data analyst by by day so okay. my whole thing is you know analytics like you know making analytics for you know supply chain stuff like that um and i've been like half of the fun now for me is just looking at the youtube analytics thing and just being like trying to make sense of it <laughs> because have, like have you had any success that's my question i, I the first 30 second retention thing is the only thing to me that makes any sense. Do they stick around long enough where it sounds like I didn't click bait them on the title? Other than that, I'm lost. Yeah. Other than that, like I, I've, so what I've learned, like just in general on like, because of today's like short form content, bigger's better, everything like that. I've learned that yes, you can easily almost quote unquote farm views. As I said on a stream, Meaning that there is a formula that you can follow that you will have, you know, the virality that people are looking for. But the problem is, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and here and sleep. Um, the problem is, um, you know, it polarizes the 15 minutes of fame effect. Ah, oh, fickle audience. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so like, you know, people who blew up during COVID a year later, it's like, who's that person? <laughs> um, and like, you know, like Dream, Dream is a weird exception, but also as soon as Dream got big, Dream was riddled with controversy. Um, well, it sounds like a lot of it was, I don't want to say, like, I don't know if he's at fault or he's not at fault, but he mm -hmm. did seem to make all the worst decisions you could make, to make things as bad as possible. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I mean, look like everyone, like <laughs> one of the comments on my, um, recent videos was, was this video is so good. I swear I'm going to hear allegations about you in five years. And I was like, I hate that that's a compliment. <laughs> um, but like that's kind of the thing is like you have all of those youtubers that go viral they get big people Why start you... oh <laughs> yeah see but that's Didn't he know we were live jeez <laughs> no that's completely normal for uh like me in this world at ah, whatever this is a copy um but yeah so uh the virality doesn't really um like a what? Yeah, it's, uh, it, 
Another it's... thing, actually, yeah, call, another guy I collab with, a buddy of mine, he calls himself Rolo Tomasi online. Mm -hmm. He calls it about the difference between fast growth and slow growth. Yep, yep. Where fast growth gets viral quick. You kind of described it. It goes quick up, but then it's quick down. So there's a lot of periphery skill sets you need to learn. Like you said yourself, handling your personal life to the point where it won't affect your YouTube career. Yeah. And all those little things, or how to do your equipment, or how to have the right stuff. And if you do it slowly, then all that stuff builds the same as you build. Mm -hmm. So it's more sustainable. Like yeah. I'm, I've seen your audience. I'm impressed for some of your videos. They're like, you know, small channel stuff. They'll get a thousand views, but the engagement on them is huge. Yeah. It's, and the thing Just is, the comments alone. Yeah. The thing is that I know is I'm doing, I wanted the old school, like YouTube experience, like, you know, building stuff like this and getting to see the world develop over time is like something that I enjoy because the long term growth builds consistency. Like, the only real viable way that short form content like works right now for a consistency level is yeah. a if you already had an established name b if you're making rage bait and c if you're doing something like you know cooking like something that is like it can be short form that you know you can fit it into a minute video and then you're like oh okay cool um yeah. Thinking, uh, who's that new guy? He's gotten big now with the cooking channels. He uses the NPC face as his thing. Oh, uh, ah. Uh. I think he's out of. I think he's out of Austin too. I just can't remember his name. Yeah, I'm sure somebody. Hey, if uh, when this goes live, whoever's mm -hmm. in the comments, let us know who we're talking about. Yeah, is it Joshua Wiseman? No, he's Houston. No, no, no. He's the other one. He's the Austin guy who keeps trying to build Burger King better than Burger King. Oh, yeah. I, I don't know. I feel like I watch their videos, um, and everything, but. Yeah, and you know, one, one of the of those things you probably recognize the profile picture more than the name. Yeah. Yeah, because like, and then also one thing I noticed that my audience like is, you know, I build decently sized builds like this is a this is a good build, but the, scale. Yeah, the difference is, is I always build to scale um, based off the player. Right. Just just because it makes it fun, because then you can, you know, navigate it and you know what you well, want. It's a different skill set too, right? Yeah, it's a different skill set because you're making yourself like you're making it look better on a lower resolution, essentially. Um, but like here, it's like the one thing they do like is that if they want, they can follow along and copy my builds with these because I built this and I could like I built this originally in a night. And then because I was recording, I just built it spread out over two videos. It's nice it's simple yeah it's simple but it's also like effective it's not finished this was actually like one of my more recent videos but well that's the thing with minecraft too though isn't it it's not so much that how well can you play the game it's how well can you entertain an audience mm -hmm. yeah kind of like what that, does that uh... even mean like you know the same guys who do outrage stuff or maybe there's a minecraft cooking video somewhere like you were saying <laughs> in your case it's like do you what do you think is your big draw do you think it's nostalgia or do you think it's just actually I'm going to link this question to another question. Mm -hmm. I heard you say on one of yours that people are telling you mm -hmm. that they put your videos on to go to sleep. Yep. And then you took it as a compliment. <laughs> yeah, no, people, like, they watch my videos. They'll join my streams. And they'll be like, hey, not watching, but I'm just listening to you in the background. You know, it's fun. And that's also a big thing. It's kind of like an extra level up from those, like, relaxing long plays. Um yeah surprising how many of those there are and how well they do on views i know but the thing is is for some reason you have to that's one of the ones like the short form where you have to uh like you have to have um the right you know the right stuff for those to work i tried one it got like four views <laughs> um yeah and it was just me you know on this world just kind of collecting stuff Here's a pretty good view you can get of the settlement so far. Oh, good. I've been taking screenshots as we go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, but I think one of the main draws I have is, you know, I just like, I just always try to, I try to have fun in the game. Like I don't, I don't let like, I don't treat it like, oh, I have to finish this or else people won't watch my videos or I have to like add it, combining the worlds together was because balancing it with a personal like a job became a little hard balancing three series at once um oh, bad. with all of them being at 50 minutes uh especially what kind of frequency are we talking here like one monday wednesday one friday week. every week oh yeah yeah it's a second job yeah and then saturday you know streaming and stuff but um you know it's it's nice because 
my solution to that was combine the worlds and make it so now when I go in the nether portal here, uh, I can actually show you that after this. But now that I, when I go into the nether portal here, if I'm not feeling like playing on this world, I don't have to. I can go to the other world. Um, and I feel like that also, it's like I, a lot of things like... It's a very ethos thing because he had his... I think he talked about that in an old video where he always had his single player world mm -hmm. and then he had a modded world and then he would always have a server world. Yep. It was first at Minecraft and then it got to be Hermitcraft. And then you could always tell he'd always focus most on his world, but I noticed now he's focusing more on the, the multiplayer world and mm. less on the modded. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's kind of, it's kind of pretty much just like that. Like, but also because my approach was, you know, when I'd sit and play Minecraft or when we'd all sit and play Minecraft, when it was the quote unquote glory days, um, we would go ahead like we would like we wouldn't play on the same world every day unless we had friends and you know limiting yourself to one world is kind of dumb in terms of minecraft because that's what makes it stale is limiting it like limiting it to one world because then you're like setting yourself to the confines of something it's kind of like uh in writing you know if you uh I know I had this on because I put colon. Um, no, it's great. We just I just built a super smelter for our server. So yeah, yeah. No, I so built we went full sixty four. Yeah, I used uh, iCraft MC's video. Um, really good. I remember that one? The day one, the day one super smelter. Yep, yep. And he was like, "You can expand this however long you want." Um, but yeah, it's uh the thing that it's like kind of like in writing, you know, when they introduce a multiverse theory you always see a quality jump because then you could like, okay, I'm not confined to the parameters that I set earlier. Um, you know, I can do whatever And here. This like fixes, you know, what I like because, you know, this is kind of a little medieval, more Victorian, uh, kind of theme. Like, yeah, just it's, as I mean, it's the classic Minecraft, everybody used to make castles, castles and wood houses yeah. are your first thing. Yeah. And it's like, okay, like you can see the progression and everything down here is like my mind, you know, nothing too crazy, but, just something fun um every world has to have a giant hole yeah that's every one of my worlds always has to have it i always take an entire chunk and dig it down that's why that new deep slate yeah not a fan oh i, I hate it too like yeah i can tell i can tell we came from the same eras of minecraft because the first thing i would always do in like my beta worlds was dig yeah. a chunk out and be like okay we're set for gobble <laughs> <laughs> not just that because that's where you branch your diamond mines out you'd always none of this like we don't do anymore where you dig on level 11 i know no, that's no, what i hate gotta... yeah it makes the mining part of minecraft more annoying yeah and i think that's like yeah this is pretty much what the main thing i've got i've got another little sediment that i built that we can you know walk and talk because i know we still got some questions but yeah, yeah. well the next part's going to be on your building style so oh know, yeah or there it doesn't matter to me yeah, no, we can walk and talk because I know mine. <laughs> so, for, okay, well, uh, where, where'd you go? Oh, <laughs> you fell down. down, yeah. All right, so on the building, I'll start with, like, what I use so I can hear it. Like, for me, I always like the only mod I use for building mm -hmm. is the random block placing mod. Have you ever seen this one? Nope. Absolutely wonderful. All it does is it cycles between all the blocks in your hotbar and places one each time you click, mm -hmm. which is great if you want to add some simple texture to things. Which yeah, it, that's the one thing that kind of strays the most from from old and classic Minecraft styles. Mm -hmm. And then beyond that, I always try to because I used to have a degree in art history and graphic design. So I always try to think of texture, color and shape. So yeah, for example, I've noticed it like because you you very solid blocks there with your uh, stone bricks. Mm -hmm. But I would mix the stone bricks with like andesite and like tough blocks usually or something like that. And it would give it some texture used to have it darker on the bottom, lighter on the top, rustification. But you don't do that. You have, But you have a very, like I said, it's a classic style. So I'm just curious, like, what do you use? Do you use any mods? Do you go through it with anything? Yeah, so I'm, just, I'm 100% vanilla. I mean, um, I like to use, uh, what is it? I like to use my, um, oh, here, you might need some food. <laughs> Make sure you don't die. Um, <laughs> but uh, you might... Um, yeah, I don't use any mods. Um, I do like Not shaders. The light mod, the light I, overlay. Yeah, I do. I do use shaders, but that's it. Um, shaders and Optifine. Outside of that, just bare bones vanilla. Just because I always had trouble with mods, and whenever I'd install stuff with mods, it just go to like eh, everything would fall apart. Like I tried to get the replay mod and uh, Optifabric and everything to to work, but 
I try to load it and every time now it crashes. So I'm just like, all right, we're sticking with first person. <laughs> but to be fair, if you want to go back to back to beta, replay probably wouldn't work with you because it's great. It honestly, it makes it more cinematic. And I don't know if you do a lot of video editing, like mm -hmm. your edits are fairly simple. Mm -hmm. But I find when I'm doing replay mod, I actually have to know the difference between jump cuts or an L cut or a J cut, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Really powerful tool, but it is a whole new aspect of the game and it does slow down your ability to build things yeah now you're focused more on the filming of it yeah well because that's what was making this world really intensive that caused me to merge the series together uh more time filming and less time actually yeah so this one was this one was i was working for like maybe two hours for 50 minutes of footage um oh. but the thing was is it was heavy editing in that you know, I, it was more cinematic. So I have an, I actually have like an intro that I filmed and I updated it every five episodes. So the intro, it would be the same intro, but it would I gonna say ballsy. Yeah. It would be the same intro and every five episodes it would update to, you know, the new world. And then when I do my recaps, instead of, you know, running around the world, you know, left clicking at things i would do cinematic like drone shot well drone shots but you know kind of drone shots like you know crane shots stuff like that um and you know it's still it's still something i like but for right now it's one of those things where since i've got like a nine to five and this isn't a full-time job like i don't have the time to you gotta be efficient yeah i don't have the time the to do it the thing i found that worked well for my series when as soon as I get a template and I can just plug and play new footage into it, it saves a lot of time mm -hmm. and workflow. Yeah. But that's going to be a later question about like the video editing and stuff like that. Yeah. So. Yeah. So that's, that's kind of my build style. Don't worry. I know how to get to this other settlement. <laughs> uh, um, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. It's not it's actually not that far, but this one. Yeah. Cause this world started out as I really wanted to get into the lore. I was really inspired by like, uh, the last kingdom on Netflix. Um, which is this, oh, what's this one? This is like a Witcher type thing. Yeah, it's kind of like that. It's like Vikings. Um, it's oh, gotcha. It goes through the formation of England. Uh, from I think it's Uhtred's, uh, perspective. So basically, it's someone who's a Dane. Um, and the whole time he's trying to reclaim his birthright, but it gets tied up in you know England trying to form. And so it was like kind of the Anglo-Saxon war, stuff like that. Um, gotcha. Really good. Uh, I I started watching it in like high school, but now, now I just kind of like play and build in theme and just kind of have fun because I didn't have to like, now it's like, if I don't have anything to do, I can just go on an adventure. Um, yeah. When I was doing you like... Need, you need that theme too. Yeah. Like our last season for our Minecraft SMP was Warcraft 40k. And that's where we're doing the mega builds. Mm. Like we just finished that one and started a new one in January. But oh, yeah, it's it's it keeps it keeps you interested in it because this game doesn't have. I think I called it in one of my videos. It's not a game. Mm -hmm. It's five toys wearing a trench coat. <laughs> yeah. So being a toy, you have to you have to make your own game, like your own goals. Yeah, and that's like that uh one video that um, it was like uh I forgot the title. It's like you're gatekeeping your own Minecraft experience. And I think it just, it mainly just talked about how, you know, people are just letting their imagination limit it. And, you know, everyone's sitting there like being like, oh, why can't it just be like the old days? And it's like, well, the old days are so good is because we were just playing it. That makes sense. There wasn't like all these like standards or like competitiveness. Like I do not, I do not understand Minecraft Bed Wars competitions. Like I do, but I also don't. <laughs> I don't, I'm with you too. I don't understand them myself. As far as like a PVP type game goes, this mm -hmm. is one of the worst ones you could pick. It's so janky. <clears throat> well, it's like games like, um, was it games like, you know, Fortnite and CSGO and like stuff like that. Like it makes sense that there is like a really competitive side of it. Yeah. Minecraft. The competitive side is the side. Yeah. Yeah. Like Minecraft Bed Wars. What do you, what do you, what are you going to do? <laughs> like, like congratulations you won a game on hypixel <laughs> well i know because hypixel for them that was their business they're making crazy cash on it i know that, didn't they get closed down or recently or something i've heard rumors on that i never really played it or watched or followed it i just heard about it from a business perspective but yeah no, that was also the thing uh that was going to be a previous thing here back to like your add where you ask a question <laughs> yeah 
where everybody who starts on YouTube starts as a Minecrafter. Like, mm -hmm. do you remember Leafy? Oh, yeah. Leafy started on Minecraft videos. Really? Yeah, he had a Minecraft server. He did a video of it a while back where he was making... He made his own version of Hypixel or whatever. He was doing 20 grand a month off of it. Huh. And then he switched to, to bullying children. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Off. Yeah. You remember that? A other ones, too. You remember that one? random... uh, Like, that random spurt in, like, 2021 20, where he came back for three videos and they got banned? Yeah. <laughs> I was like... Yeah, this ain't this ain't 2015 YouTube anymore. You can't be just bullying kids. <laughs> yeah, no, but like, but yeah. So this is this is what I called Northwood. Um, I spent the pretty much the whole month of December up here. As you can see, just say very very Christmas. Yeah, very Christmas. I was here in December. Um, this tree was atrocious. I actually, if you Aww. went back to my Christmas episode, like the day before Christmas, Aww. I went. I climbed down the tree. <laughs> Walked away and turned around and laughed so hard that I got sound gated. <laughs> um, I've seen worse. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah, I know. Cause I was like, I was trying to plant it and get that, um, get that good, like mega tiger one. Yeah. Yeah. But, oh, and you got it up getting the big bushy short ones. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So this one is like, I, I, pe I'm sure people forgot it exists, but I always look back at these just because it's like, you know, this was an example of the audience can smell when you're kind of half-assing a video. Oh, don't be like that, because Jack Napier, one yeah. of the guys on our SMP, he builds like this. He built, he tried to build one of them big Lords of the Ring or yeah, Lord of the Rings castles, mm -hmm. and he used all andesite, so it was just a giant rock. Oh no, I'm talking about the snowman in the tree. That's because oh, I just snowman. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, no. I, I what I meant by they can smell if you're half-assing a video is if they they can tell if you're like oh crap I need a video put it out today. <laughs> um, the snowman actually you know he's cute in an ugly way. <laughs> um, it's got yeah it's finger painting on the fridge. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, it might have made the lower door on the fridge, not the freezer door, but. <laughs> But I mean, I don't think it's the it's so much the visuals that sell people on Minecraft videos. I really do think it's the stories. Yeah, I mean, one of the things that I noticed is the lore, like the ones where I was trying to develop the story mm -hmm. kind of failed just because I wasn't able to put time into it, like enough time into it. Right. Um. But. And what do you count as a failure? Is it just like like views, watch time or engagement? Like what's your what's your KP? What's your success metric? Uh for a YouTube video. My success metric for a video is if I'm happy with the product and I can watch that video again without being like, okay, whatever, then I think it's a success. I know that views, views and like that stuff, subscribers out of all of them, it's kind of a vanity metric. Like they don't mean anything. They don't do anything for performance. Um, yeah, they don't even show the videos to subscribers anymore. Yeah, yeah, I mean, <laughs> Like, like I why subscribe. <laughs> yeah, I don't uh I don't see any of that. And like I know it, I don't see it because you know I'm so small. Um because it like if I get a video that gets 60 views, I'm just like, okay. <laughs> yeah, but you've had a few I've seen that have blown up into I think your biggest one was what, sixty thousand or something like that? Like oh. a decently sized video. No, my biggest one is like four thousand. Um and that was my first hardcore episode, which is interesting. Because one thing I have learned from YouTube analytics on Minecraft, it yep. is actually more quote unquote profitable in terms of views and interactions and stuff to, it's like the Netflix syndrome. It's more profitable and more engaging to, if we're talking profit as in like gaining subscribers, right? it's more engage or more profitable to start a new series, record that first episode, release it, start a new series the next day. So starting that first episode, the first episode of any of my series are always the highest performers. And over time, you can see it like decline. Like my first episode of hardcore was 4,000 views. First episode of back to beta days was 1,000 views. This one was the exception because obviously I had to mold it together, but I have had some like 840 view ones. Um, and that was actually the first time I had a high uh, ranking, like let's play video do well. My one-off ones, I can, 
I can pretty much uh kind of like 70 percent. i can get a at least a thousand views on them um like i'm sure you saw the my april fools video where i said i was quitting minecraft <laughs> by the way uh screw you i was talking to my i mean this in a funny way by the way yeah so i'm sitting there talking to the old lady she's like what do you got planned well tomorrow i got like a, uh, a smaller youtuber and we're gonna do a collab thing finally gonna reach out to other people in the community like you were talking about Mm -hmm. oh, that's great so what is his name and i'm like oh it's this guy here and i put on your video and it's like well, I'm quitting youtube <laughs> and she's like well i guess that went well <laughs> no i was so like, like i didn't even think of april fools you actually did catch us on that one i know i, like, I caught none of wasn't even gonna tell me <laughs> i caught a lot of people and the funny thing is is it was the people who consistently watch and comment on my videos um yeah. the random ones the new viewers were like i didn't even have to know or i didn't even have to watch this guy to know it was fake um, yeah, no, I didn't just mess around in the potato world after, uh, the first minute. Um, yeah. but yeah, See, it's funny. Oh, I was gonna say, it's funny too, how you talk about your first episode on a series for me, it's the last episode, mm -hmm. like my single player world. It was, I had a lot of jokes, like my other account deals with like, uh, I'm surrounded by a lot of those guys that go online, talk about being alpha males and whatever. Oh God. Nonsense. Yeah. And so I kind of take, I kind of take jokes with that. Mm -hmm. so like instead of uh, i have like the hole of glory which is a play on you know glory hole or whatever yeah or uh the the trading hall of masculine excellence because one of the guys had a had a conference about it and so i just make it a minecraft themed one and everybody kind of has a big joke that you know these alpha males and you just make fun of it in minecraft mm -hmm. yeah but the last one was maybe the real alpha male was the friends we made along the way and that one was the one that took off so oh yeah i'm starting to wonder then maybe the difference is in your case it's because a new series is interesting and in mine it's because i threw so much shade yeah. That's why it got diffused. Yeah, a, a lot of so I've been kind of like going through and like the different phases of what kind of brings people to me mm -hmm. has been I have had I've had low like exposure as in, you know, not many people are seeing me, but one or two episodes they usually stick around, which is, you know, the comments that I get, the consistent likes. Um you know, I've had people who I'm like, I've had a few subscribers who comment on every video so far. Um, and, you know, they come to all the streams or they try to and everything. And so where I'm getting is, like we said earlier, the long term st building where, you know, they're they're recognizing me. But it's just getting that new audience. That's that's kind of my struggle point. I think that's everybody's struggle. It's the same thing with me. Even on my other, like my other channel is 26, 27,000, uh, something like that. And just getting them uh, to this channel is even, Yeah. I guess it's just very difficult to build new audiences. But I mean, it's like you said, with slow growth, those ones that comment on mm -hmm. every video and show up to every stream, my success metric is to get those thousand loyal followers. Yeah. That's what, there. that's what I, that's what I'm interested. I, cause if you, I'm sure your uh, YouTube analytics look the same. If you look at it, there's a bunch of spikes, there's a bunch of downs. Those are normal, like ups, downs, spikes, whatever. I'm interested in raising up the baseline of like all my metrics. So keeping it like a little bit high. So yeah, I guess way to look at it, I think. Yeah, because I look at, okay, I see the spikes, you know, the 840 views, but then I look at where my lowest points are consistently because it shows me on average, I'm pulling about, I don't know, like a hundred or so viewers every day which is good. So yeah, you're getting that number up. That means, and that's good too, because if you ever switch over to where this becomes your job, mm -hmm. I assume, then you know, no matter what happens, that is like the income you have to work with. So if it's enough to pay all your bills and get all the stuff done, and then the boost stuff is bonus, mm -hmm. it kind of gets rid of that downside, which I'm assuming doing data analytics, you might, my previous job used to be in like risk analysis and uh, information security. So yeah. dealing with risk is like a big part of it too. I assume we're similar in that respect. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so no. Yeah, covering your covering your downside. See, and a lot of people don't think about YouTube like that either. Mm -hmm. They just think it's a way to get famous and they don't think about it like a job. Yeah, and the biggest thing that I think I am glad that I have now. Oh god, that thing's pissed at me. Hold on. <laughs> Ow. Oh. Oh, I was hunting the oh, villagers. I thought, I thought he hit me. He was hitting you. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah, but it's going to be the best world tour ever. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, but that's also one of the things that people seem to like about my videos is 
They like that I'm bad at the game. Not like, not like that I'm like, like, oh, you're so bad, like we can't watch this. I'm bad at the game in a way that real people are. Slapstick, got it. Yeah, but but you can't force it. No, I agree. So it's like, uh, what the what are they talking about with the new type of going back to nostalgia thing? Authenticity, mm -hmm. which is always such a weird buzzword, but it makes sense. Yeah, and that's the thing is you can't fake authenticity. Like I tried, I tried not to fake authenticity, but I tried to well, I like feel sincerity for that same reason. Because I find everybody loves to say like the more that people say they're authentic, the more I find they're not. Yeah, so I try to use sincerity. Yeah, like I always say in all of my videos, especially my subscriber milestones, I'm just a dude yeah. with a job playing Minecraft in his office after work. <laughs> like, like you can't really, like you can't really yeah. dress it up past that. I mean, you can, and some people fall for it. I think that's the issue, though, is that because I mean, advertising, it's always about like lying to you, and I think people are savvy enough to catch on to that. You know, mm -hmm. politicians lie to you, job your boss oh yeah there's no more rounds of layoffs this time like you know what i mean yeah everybody is very mealy mouth and it's kind of i can see people coming here and the one thing they have is this guy who's like very sincere upfront honest yeah to the point that your your clumsiness almost adds to it yeah like so I, he was polished he would at least know how to not piss off the iron golem <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah or it's just like you know just sitting there need to fidget let's go punt these villagers into the oblivion especially because this is just a copy of the world um yeah, yeah but yeah no like in one of my episodes i remember uh i went to make so some things i like to do are you know creating copies of my worlds and then going in and playing in creative off camera so i have somewhat of an idea because if I didn't figure that stuff out, it would just be me wandering around, be like, mm, "Let's do this, let's do that." Oh wait, come over well, here. Do you use Light Matica at all, or you don't go that way that route either? Uh, what's that? Oh my. Okay, Light Matica. It's an it's a great mod for mm -hmm. my Warhammer world. It was big. It's you. Wait, is it the schematics something. one? Yeah, and then you have oh, a okay. schematic, and then you can put it into your world. Really helpful for redstone builds if you don't memorize them. Uh, large mega builds. You practice. You build them in creative mode. Then you copy the schematic. You bring it into your real world. And then you place the blocks, paint by numbers. Huh? Yeah. No, I've seen that. I thought about getting it, but then also, yeah, I, that like. But then also for me, you know, I make a lot of on the fly decisions. Right. Um. Well, that's that's the the build style because a lot of people like to prepare and plan. Yeah. People like to free flow. I'm kind of in the middle, but I always like hearing. So you're strictly just like eyeballing, same as you do with your music EQ. Yep. Yep. I just kind of eyeball things and like, like that, uh, actually I can show you, um, one of the things, one of my, I guess, failures of a build, uh, in my world was, it was in that center area is the church. I tried recording it and that's actually the episode where I was just like sitting there, like, like I need to, I need to like merge these series or something or cut back on one. Um, because I sat down and I was so burnt out that I was just like, I'm not going to make a good video. <laughs> well, that's why I was surprised. Like everybody claws back something for me. It was time. I, yeah. I don't know if you've seen any of my recent videos, but I've scaled them back to under 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. Cause the way I was seeing it is the same as you, for me, it was getting burnt out, making a half hour video. And if I just do a 10 minute thing, I'll do a six minute script and then four minutes of play. Mm -hmm. First half is replay mod. The second half is this. Yeah, Keep them it's simple, and I notice you're still able to do the, the like the half hour or 26 minute videos. Yeah, I I'm do just, up uh, my guys is impressive. Yeah, my average is like 50 minutes. Um, sometimes I'll have an hour long or an hour and ten, just because or just depending on what I'm doing. Like if it's a lot of fun <laughs> stuff, like one where I found like six spawners in one cave. Um, you know I'll do a lot of that so i'll have that one will be like an hour and five minutes or so um and do you find your audience manages to stick stick through for the most part on all of it or yeah are they kind of just i'll watch half of it today half tomorrow makes your metrics look like people are joining at random times or yeah so i see a little bit uh, it's a mixture of both there a lot of them i know my one of the things i said at the beginning was i know that people watch youtube at different times um so now I like I make all my episodes into playlists. I kind of treat it as and one of my ongoing jokes is I kind of treat it as a TV network where 
I'm keeping content coming out. They can watch it at their own time. Um, so kind of like, kind of like Netflix, uh, as long as I have that baseline of people watching stuff and getting a little bit expo of exposure to new viewers on each video, then I'm happy. Like, yeah. And so well, I'll tell you one thing too, an audience thing. I don't know how, how representative I am. Yeah. But the old lady and I, what we'll do is if we have to take the, if we have to leave the house and mm -hmm. we have three Italian greyhounds yeah. and the neighbors have this dog called Frank who loves to bark drives everybody nuts mm -hmm. so we have to turn on zoom avoid because he always has two hour live streams lying around <laughs> and so the dogs have probably watched enough of his content to put him through college <laughs> yeah so maybe that's what you do like a dog friendly live stream for two hours that's about enough time to go get groceries and come home yeah so i've actually i've noticed that i got i have like a healthy mix of people who put it on to sleep or study mm -hmm. or some people actually put it on while they're playing in their own worlds um interesting What's the what's the thought behind that? Like, have they told you? Uh, no. But as someone who played a lot of games like through high school and having a lot of friends online, like most of my friends in high school were online. Uh, even though like we went to school together, like we didn't go out. We did we did this stuff. Um. Uh, I know that like gaming by yourself can kind of if you're a social gamer like me, right? It can kind of get annoying. Like the reason I'm able to keep you know, up on this world and everything is because I'm recording it and, you know, I'm talking to someone. The like, yeah. Well, like, that's the social part of it almost. You yeah. Know, you're just peering at a little box with a lens on it. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so people putting it on is like the same thing as me, you know, playing a game and no one being on and then getting burnt out versus playing a game. You know, they have my voice playing a game. And so it's like someone's playing with them. Um, it's kind of interesting. I like, I've never been big into psychology like the psychology behind it, but you know, you kind of just pick little bits and stuff up um, as you go along. And like my viewers, they, they're either like, a lot of them are also like uh, older. Like some of them are like middle-aged, like 45, 46. And they either <laughs> watch with their kids or they're watched because they play with their grandkids. Um, one of my viewers who watches like every video, um, he watches because he like shattered his ankle <laughs> when like a few years ago and ha yeah. had nothing to do. And so he started playing Minecraft on his PlayStation. And he's like, Oh, this is, this is fun. And so he's got like grandkids and stuff, but he, he plays Minecraft and just plays on console. So yeah. it's yeah, a healthy mix. You're talking more about me. Cause when I was in the military, it was it, it was modern warfare too. Oh the yeah. Is when you're at sea, there's no internet. Yeah. And so I needed a game and SimCity 4 lasted until this came out and then Minecraft. Yeah. I was like, oh, it's actually nice. It's like playing with Legos, only I never step on one of those stupid blocks and <laughs> kill myself. Yeah, and I mean, I don't know. It's just like something like when I first saw it, something clicked with this game and I, like it, like I said, I've been playing it for like what 14 14 years now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's cuz it's 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 a toy. Yeah. It's there's an exploration toy with open-ended goals there's a redstone toy where you kind of get to play like bionics mm -hmm. there's the creative building toy there's a little combat toy and what was the other one and then like the the smp collab stuff mm -hmm. and so there's five different toys and if you get bored of one like i noticed you don't really do much for redstone other than the one uh super smelter we saw over there so i don't think you're into that part of it it looks like it's mostly the building and exploration part if i got that right yep actually it's mainly building i i started exploring uh, once strip mining became somewhat obsolete <laughs> because now it's more profitable just to like walk around a cave for an hour than this strip mine. Um, especially now that I have like fortune three, so I can just run around. Plus me in the caves, uh, you know, gives kind of an interesting take. Oh yeah. This is Greg. Uh, I, he's one of my characters that I have beef with. Yeah. He's got a name. I've had huh. beef with him and called him ugly since day one. Um, <laughs> it's the running gag. I, I like it. Yeah, we got Greg. We got Max. Uh, we got a few other people. Sandy, Bonnie. Mine's falling into lava. Huh? My huh. my gimmick falling into lava. Oh Here's yeah. Yeah no my, yeah mine's dying and hating Greg. Um, so whenever huh. I need diamonds, I'm like, oh, this is a free you know, like get a lot of footage, make an entertaining video. Um, like, you know, kind of a free thing. Oh yeah. Right here. I did plan, 
Okay, I am smart because I know I have bad luck. I actually died in my hardcore world because I didn't oh, see no. that I had uh, bad omen <laughs> and went through a portal to go visit uh, a place where I'd found 95 diamonds and counting. Um, and I didn't see it and a raid started as soon as I spawned in. So this oh, is no. this is the, I guess, infrastructure for uh, in the future wiring up, you know, anti-raid stuff. So basically, is that how it works. It's the it's the space underneath that what they'll spawn in if you give it the option. Uh, no, this is actually just so I can wire uh, pistons and stuff all to one button and block off all the doorways. Oh, that makes more sense. Yeah, because if they spawn down here, I can go. I can just run down here and pick them off. But um, other than that, like, uh, yeah, <laughs> I do have. No, it's perfect. The timing was perfect on this one. I was trying to keep it to a nice tight hour, and we're. We're yeah. basically on it. Oh, we're sweet. Still. Yeah. Also, I'm up here. Also, if you have any other questions, you know, I can answer those in a quick manner. Yeah. Where'd you go? There we go. Yep. Uh, let me check my things. Going to sleep. Trench coat style of Minecraft. Oh yeah, your name. Oh yeah, Beanin. How, how did it come to be? All right. Uh, so, um, like I said, my friends call me Beanin. Um. Oh yeah, I didn't show you the bridge. Guess we can walk over there. Uh, my friends call me Bean, and, and it was kind of a Aww. weird. It, it was a name that started in college. Um, so it also goes with my skin. Uh, if you see, yeah, uh, this is my skin. So back in college, there was Bean is kind of like an alter ego. <laughs> gotcha. So there was a Christmas party that my fraternity was having. And, you know, I went, we, I needed stuff for the party just to be on theme. And I'd never bought stuff because I was a sophomore. And, you know, I just never did theme parties before. Um, so I went ahead and me and my friends went to Walmart and we found this thing, which is in real life, it's the green and red are supposed to be holly berries. Uh, it's a onesie. A Christmas Jolly Jumper. Yeah, yeah, it's a onesie. And if you look on my butt... <laughs> There's the a flap. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. That was a selling point on the package. It said functional butt flap. And on the front across my chest, it said, kiss me. On my butt flap, it said, ho, ho, ho. And then there was a plastic stick on the hood that had um, uh, like a thing of mistletoe on it hanging out in front of me. <laughs> so I was like, okay, I have to get this. Go to the party, do whatever. Some drinks were consumed, some times were had. Fast forward to three in the morning. We take a group picture next morning in the group chat. There's a picture of um, me like sitting there all blurry, like, you know, late night. Up at least, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Late, late night shenanigans. You know, you're sitting there like, hey, what are you going to do? Um, but he uh, but my friend in the group chat was like, I swear we need like it's like there's like you're like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde when it comes like when it comes to you know, by day is like, cause you, by day, you're a normal student, you do whatever. And then you get around the guys and you're just like, <laughs> just another creature. Um, and so right around the time that happened, you know, after that, you know, we went along, uh, with our lives and after that, you know, COVID happened. And then that one accent challenge, the one where he's like, he's like number five, we got, uh, something. And then like number three was, uh, there was like, mm. and then like number three was Beanin. <laughs> and so they started calling me like, they started like calling me like Brunk, something like that, like plays on my normal name. And right. then they just stuck with Beanin. <laughs> and so Beanin has, rolls off the tongue. yeah. And so Beanin like has always just been like the, uh, if, if anyone does something like, or if I do something dumb or something stupid, they'll just be like Beanin. <laughs> Um, and so that's why I kind of went with the YouTube name of Bean and just because my personality isn't like, it's not polished. Like my, you know, name would like my normal name would suggest it's right. It's like Bean and it's, <laughs> I'm just there playing a game being an idiot. Um, well, that's the, that's the thing, right? It, Cause it gets, it gets curious. Yeah. Like, why does somebody have this name? Yeah. Why is somebody named PewDiePie? Why is nobody named Bean and yeah. And it's one of those names too, where it's not like, you know, like, raid shadow legends 275 like you know why they have that name <laughs> or like curious yeah. duck 174 dude it's hard when you get a good one one word name 
Yeah. Like even because my one that I use for the account, Ryan Stone, mm -hmm. Ryan's like my middle name and Stone was based on an old username I had used to like hide my identity. Yeah. Even that one, like there's always another one. Yep. Yep. No, this one, I went and created it. Uh, The one uh, for like the handle parts, you know, I just did the real bean in all one word, but all of them didn't have to have a space n number uh, like underscore anything. It was all just clean. And and that's like, uh, that's when I was... game. I don't know if you guys played this or if I'm dating myself. Did you ever do the thing where you try to find a Google search that returns no results? Oh yeah, don't you get like a little plaque from them if you do that? Yeah, I don't know if they do it. Like, they, they used to just give you the whole thing. I guess they made a plaque for it, but there was that one. And then you try to do the Wikipedia game where you always try to get to Kevin Bacon after six. <laughs> yeah, I did do the Wikipedia game. <laughs> Oh, that's good. All yeah. right. Anyways, so unless you got anything else to show, this is all I had, all the questions. Okay. I got an email from them like a week after I started my job. Right. And they didn't say anything. They just put an they just put an interview on my Google calendar and then said, please accept. Oh. And I said, uh, unfortunately, you know, I can't accept the interview right now because I just started a new job mainly because it took you three months to reply. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, people are always looking at the new offer. That sounds more like, no, I'm good. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I just started my job. So I'm like, but I'm open, you know, kept it professional and everything, you know, open to, open to new. Because I did want to work for Monster because, you know, I used to drink like three of them a day. <laughs> it would definitely be an interesting company. I can see that. Yeah, and who knows? You could get on like the equivalent of the Red Bull racing team, but, you know, for Monster, even though they're not they as... have one of those? Oh yeah, they they uh they it's um like the WCW versus WWF, but for for racing teams. Yeah, no, they uh they were originally partnered with Hoonigan and Travis Pastrana. Huh. Um, when he when he and Ken Block and everything were um, you know, like not starting out, but like really coming into the mainstream. Right. Um. But yeah. So, luckily, I got a job. But yeah. And definitely interested in the S and P thing. Um, do you are you guys like mid season right now? We just started in February or I think we started in March. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Like I I don't even have a permanent base yet. I just built a small little township right at the spawn area for people to join in. Yeah. Find the guest book and that. Yeah. I mean, I did. Yeah. I can. I'm excited. I'd do that. <laughs> yeah. Well, like I said, it's it's an open offer. It's something I'm gonna start interviewing other people and. They can mm -hmm. have open offers if they ever want to do collabs. And then the idea was then you would meet those people and they would meet you and they would meet my SMP guys. And then anybody can do whatever they want to with that. It's kind of more just, it's like an incubator. People yeah. can make whatever they want from it. I don't really care about the SMP so much. Like I said, for me. Yeah. But it's more like creators supporting creators. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I, I had a Skype chat and I actually, it was one of the reasons that I couldn't, um, opened my laptop in 2015 because I'd wake up and it have a hundred thousand messages in it. And just the Ram would be gone. <laughs> oh dear. Um, yeah, Skype, but, there was your first problem. Yeah. But I had a, I had a Skype chat with like a uh, music artist in 2015. And you know, that, that same thing is the reason why all of my first releases were up like for of music were up to like um, 15,000 streams a song, 30,000. Uh, so yeah, I'm always up for creators supporting creators and all that. I just like seeing people get big. Like I said, for me, not really too concerned. Plus the music thing. Yeah. So like, obviously there's epidemic sound in other places. I can see there being a niche for guys who make, who license music out to YouTube channels. I mean, I yeah, remember... mine's, mine's all pretty, mine's all royalty free. I'm independent. Oh, nice. Cause I remember, remember mumbo jumbo back when he had that, uh, intro tune and exit tune. Yep. And he I'm got screwed by that. Wait, was yeah, it? Yeah, and it was, it yeah. was such a weird thing because the artist gave him permission, but mm -hmm. the artist used a sample, and then the samples got him on the DMCA. Yep, yep. Because I guess the artist needs to have a, a different license for being able to license his own music after mm -hmm. he samples. Yeah, no, really it's... Understand it, but that sucked for him. Yeah. When his YouTube revenue just got shot out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, the, the, music, the music licensing and stuff is really weird. That's why I always make my own stuff. And if I use a sample, I use Looperman. I contact the artist, say, hey, I can give you, you know, song credits on this. Um, but you're not missing out on any royalties because I have six monthly listeners. <laughs> mm. 
Um, Looperman? What's what's Looperman? I've never heard of this one. Oh, it's like where you can get free MP3 loops that are like just like music loops. You can do acapellas, everything. Um, it's just like royalty free stuff that you can upload. It's kind of oh. compar- comparable to SoundCloud, but for like 30 second clips or not even 30 second clips, like four bar clips. Interesting. Yeah. Here I am wasting my time on Epidemic for that one. Yeah, but no, right. I used to. I was thinking for the end of this one, we're going to walk through the portal as we go through it. So, okay. And then I'll stop with recording. Oh, yeah. Also, if you need that, uh, I'll send it to you. I can either upload it and then you can grab it, download, or I probably set up a Dropbox or something. I've never actually had to send a large file before. Yeah, for, oh, the recording? Yeah, yeah, if you need it. Okay, yeah. Oh, there's, the, like, where's the portal? I've been recording this whole time, too, so. <laughs> oh, you have? Oh, perfect then. Perfect. Yep. All right. This is my plan for an exit as we go through the portal. That's where I'm going to do the hard cut. Okay. Anyways, that should be it for the video. Thank you guys for watching. It was just a little quick collaboration that I got to do with someone else. And who knows, we might even do an SMP together. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, leave a comment. Let me know what you thought about uh, what goes on behind the scenes here at BNN. And as always, remember, subscribe. I post videos every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday with stri- stream Saturday with videos in between. Until next time, I'm Beanin. Thanks for watching. Peace.